Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to cover how to do software updates on these all-in-one inverters. They sold under lots of different brands all around the world, but they all stem from the same Voltronic units and the software installation procedure is the same for all of them. So whether you've got a 3 kilowatt, 5, 8 or an 11 like this, this procedure will apply to you. The first thing you're going to need to do this is the serial to ethernet jack adapter cable that came with the inverter unit you bought. It's important to use the one that you got with the inverter because sometimes the pinout on the ethernet jack end can be a little bit different. For the other end of things you're going to need an RS232 to USB adapter as modern laptops don't have the serial port connection on them anymore so this just gives you a USB adapter that plugs right into the cable. Once you've got your two cables you'll need to contact the manufacturer of your device or the brand name that you bought it under with the model number and they should send you the correct software for the unit that you own. So the first thing you need to do is to plug the ethernet end into the computer port on the bottom of the remote panel and then plug the USB end into the USB drive on your laptop and go straight into your watch power app. The first thing you need to check is the main CPU version which in this case is 7.3.07 .07. the remote panel CPU version is 12.21 and we're going to be reflashing both of those today. The next important thing you need to note is your COM port ID. In this case it's COM4. It might be different on your laptop but you need to identify what that is because you'll have to manually input it when you're doing the update software. Before you go into the reflash tool you want to make sure that watch power has indeed shut down. So you'll just need to go down to your taskbar down the bottom here. Right click on the flashing symbol and click exit and then go back and verify that it has shut down so that you're not holding up the COM port with other traffic. Next thing you'll do is you'll go into your reflash or update software that you've gotten from your manufacturer. In this case it's the Maxi 11K and it'll be the Arena INV reflash tool. We'll open that up. It'll come up just like this. So now straight away up here it's looking for COM1 but we know that our COM port that's in use is COM4. We select our files that came with the package, Max E 11K7307 in this case. Click open. So now it's read the file and it's allowed us this option of update firmware. So we'll click that, go ahead. So now the display on the remote panel has changed, going UPG, yes. Once you have it running it should take between 5 and 15 minutes to finish the update. In this case I'm doing a reflash of the software as the unit has developed a few bugs which is common throughout the range of all these units from all the different brands and I'll get into the details of that at the end of the video. The first reflash is now approaching completion at 99%. Programming successful message should appear. If it appears as unsuccessful Repeat the process again and it should come up as successful on the second attempt. So the software installation on the main inverter control unit has now been successfully carried out. As you can see it's really easy once you have the correct software from your manufacturer. The next thing I'm going to do now is the software installation for the remote panel. Both units have to be reflashed and as I said I'll give the details about that at the end of the video. So here we are remote panel reflash tool. It's the same basic procedure just with a slightly different software. We're on COM port 4, which is what it is on this particular computer. I'm going to click Update MCU. So it's working its way through the procedure. And the progress bar is slowly but surely updating. Okay, so we're now back. 99%, couple of seconds left. COM was closed. Verify, verify flash OK. Reflash case time. So it's telling us that it's been successful. So to go over that again, you're going to need the serial to ethernet cable that came supplied with the inverter that you bought. Because most modern laptops don't have that serial port on them anymore, you're going to need the R232 serial to USB adapter. You'll have to get a good one to do that as some of the ones on eBay can be a little bit dodgy. So make sure you buy a good quality one. 
Then you'll need the software from the manufacturer or the supplier that you bought the unit off. They'll send it to you as a download. It's a straightforward software package and everything's click and play. Once you do it right, make sure your unit has battery power, preferably fully charged. Charge them up by the mains if you need to and make sure that the computer that you're using also has no chance of running out of power because any interruptions in the process will result in a wiped ECU that may not be recoverable. The reasons why I had to do the reflash on this unit was because it had developed a couple of problems over the last little while. The first one was that it wouldn't turn on on three separate occasions with the sun shining on the panel so good power coming in from them and the battery is in a good state of charge. Pressing the button on and off it refused to turn on. This happened three times over the space of about a week and a half. It was intermittent, it hasn't done it since, but either way it seemed to be a software glitch. The next problem is the equalization cycles. It refuses to run equalization cycles for the last number of weeks. You'll switch it on manually through the menu. The message, the equalization message will flash up on the screen, but there's absolutely no change in charge level to the batteries. And also the timeout wasn't functioning. It would keep the program running indefinitely. Basically it looked like the remote panel had tried to activate the program, but the inverter itself or the battery control unit wasn't actually activating it and nothing was changing. And it would keep running until it was manually switched off through the menus. Another thing that was going on was that the LED that you now see working, the little light bar here, that had also stopped working. Now it's normal from time to time that you get software glitches, glitches excuse me, in these units. You'll see a lot of videos online with various different problems and various different models and also firmware updates that are available from time to time. So this process is a very straightforward one that you'll kind of need to know how to do if you're buying any of the range of Voltronic units, be it for a reflash or for a software update. When it comes to this particular manufacturer, Volticon, I have to say I found them very helpful to deal with. When I contacted them with the problem, they were very helpful, gave full in detailed support and were willing to go above and beyond even offering a battery charger on loan, um, which was extremely helpful. One complaint I would have though is, and I suspect that they may be using an automated answering service for some of their emails. All of the helpful emails were signed off by an individual. I won't name any names, but both of them were great and very helpful. However, some of the emails that were not signed off with any name were completely useless and frustrated me a lot while having to talk to them. As I said though, once I was talking to a human who signed off on the emails, they went above and beyond to provide all the support that they could. So guys, that's how you do the software update or reflash procedures for these Voltronic units or Voltronic based units. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.